Okay, should we get started? Yes. Yes. Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade, Commerce, and Tourism Committee. It's Wednesday, January 20, 2010. I'm Councilwoman Janice Hahn, and so far, it's just me. Uh, but we will be expecting Councilmember Rosendahl momentarily, and I, I know Councilmember LaBonge, like all of us, have had huge issues related to the storm in our districts. He, he's out there in his district right now mopping up. Uh, so uh, we, he may come or he may not, depending on what he's uh, involved in out in his own district. There was a lot of flooding, a lot of damage all over the city. So I think all of us are um, kind of paying attention to what was going on in our districts this morning. So with that, why don't we start with item number one. Under item one, the Board of Airport Commissioners submits for approval the First Amendment to a contract with Clean Fuel Connection which is for the provision of independent third-party monitoring of construction equipment operations as required by the Community Benefits Agreement, uh, which was approved by Council in December 2004, along with the LAX Master Plan and other related documents. The proposed First Amendment to this contract would extend the term for an additional four years, expiring on February 5, 2014. City Administrative Officer has submitted a report and recommendation for approval of the First Amendment to this contract. So this is um, with the LAX Master Plan, and this was a part of the Community Benefits Agreement yes. that we agreed to have a third-party monitor, independent third-party monitor that would um, monitor, document, report independently on construction equipment, operations, comply compliance with environmental requirements during all this during construction during yes. construction so they first had a three-year contract yes and, and now we're uh, looking to give them an extension another four years they did an incredibly wonderful job for us on the south airfield uh, project which was the first master master plan mm -hmm. project uh, we were extremely uh, um, uh, impressed with their work Why? Uh, and their diligence. Why are you impressed with that? Um, they were uh, on site mm -hmm. uh, continuously, uh, monitored uh, and verified the emissions from over 350 pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. worked with uh, uh, either EPA or, or the local air quality district to ensure that we have the cleanest available construction mm -hmm. equipment equipment on site. In addition to that, they did uh, um, verification for us and monitoring on all kinds of, of emission to ensure the best air quality during construction. Um, monitored uh, dust uh, emissions, uh, monitored idling time, construction equipment idling, etc. Uh, provided um, uh, reports uh, as needed. Um, they were again. Uh, they did. They did a very, very good job. What we about uh, complaints? Were, were there complaints received during the, the South Airfield, and how, how did uh, who, who who handled that, and how were they set we, up to we respond? We do. We actually do have a construction hotline. Uh -huh. uh, that is that is set up and it is replied to and or monitored 24 hours a day. Um, on the South Airfield, we receive very few complaints that relate to emissions. I mean, usually it's trucks that are spewing mm -hmm. um, bad emissions driving down Imperial Highway. Uh, so when they got a complaint, how, were they, how did they respond? Uh, usually within half an hour, we get back to the complaint to whoever uh, to the originally <laughs> uh, made the call, mm -hmm. made the original call. Mm -hmm. uh, we either verify for them that this uh, we looked at, um, as, well, we look at our construction schedule, mm -hmm. make sure we have, do we have any deliveries, mm -hmm. do we have any constructions that's mm -hmm. taking place at that time? If not, mm -hmm. then we try our best to tell them what mm -hmm. that, whom that truck belongs to. Right. Um, if it is um, a truck that belongs to our construction contractor or any of his or her subs, mm -hmm. we usually, uh, we have somebody um, right um, on, on site mm -hmm. uh, verifying the engines, engine type mm -hmm. do we have a, a, a device or mm -hmm. does um, uh, do we have a device that is applicable mm -hmm. that we can use on the mm -hmm. engine to restrict emissions uh, we looked at the maintenance we look, actually do verify also maintenance records mm -hmm. of all of this equipment to ensure that mm -hmm. not only the devices are installed but that they are maintained throughout mm -hmm. to, to ensure that they are working to the best uh, right ability. 
Of course, that was a, that was the South uh, Airfield right. project. So I don't know how much uh, Bills District Westchester, you know, right. was impacted. But you're saying whether it's City of El Segundo or whatever, you had you think you had very few complaints during that first. Right, and we are following up, and essentially it's the same. We have set up very similar process that we are carrying through now for the right. Crossfield Taxiway. And Let me ask, ask, one of the key parts about this that really interests me is, is they're, they're required to make sure that we are using the cleanest yes. possible construction equipment. Are, are, do they, are they continually out there researching for new technology, um, you know, I, I know we're all waiting for the day when, when right. we have zero emission construction, heavy construction equipment. Is it even out there yet? Is it available? We Is there an electric, um, you know, bulldozers out there yet and, and is that what part of what they're doing is consistently looking for the the best the cleanest uh, construction equipment available uh, absolutely and and uh, actually before a contractor brings any piece of equipment on site they registered we have a listing of all of the equipment he, he and his subs are bringing on site we check uh, the engine type and the engine size with the year that's that's made to available um, uh, devices, we make sure that it is the most restrictive uh, or the cleanest device right. that is available. Uh, make sure that 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 device is is um, uh, retro or that truck or that piece mm -hmm. of equipment is retrofitted before it comes in on site. Period. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's it's works that we do ahead of time and before the equipment comes in on mm -hmm. site. Uh, also, because I feel like every day we're breaking ground in terms of cleaner technology that's available for the the bigger heavier equipment i think councilman i think you, I, I remember uh, briefing you before on on some of these activities and i think when we started the south airfield project we could find only right. something like three devices right. that were available for right. the variety of, of right. sizes of, of right. engines right. by the time we finished the south airfield project which was about a year later we had dozens to choose from. So right. I think, I think the know. market has caught up. Well, you uh, know, and, and the, the Port of Los Angeles is actually uh, investing, right. helping to invest in companies that are producing uh, some of these cleaner, cleaner trucks. Right, or so, cleaner engines, yes. Yeah, so we're, bo both of these entities for the city of Los Angeles, I think, are really striving towards the, the day when we have like zero emissions Absolutely. coming from construction projects. Um, okay, that's um, good. So you're recommending them for another four years? Yes. You know, I, I, again, to me, it's almost equally important that they monitor uh, what's going on in terms of our construction with our master plan, but also equally important is that they're always out there looking and researching for that next uh, generation of of cleaner vehicles. Uh, I assure you, Ray Gorski, who works with some, he is, he is Great. on site and he's Great. looking at all of the Great. equipment. Thank you. Any objections from my fellow council members? Seeing none. <laughs> uh, and I have no public comment on item one, so we will uh, approve that and move it to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And under item two, the Board of Airport Commissioners submits for council approval a master services contract with Southern California Gas Company for intrastate transmission of non-core natural gas used by the central utility plant mm -hmm. at Los Angeles International Airport. The CAO has submitted a report and recommendation for approval of the contract. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Dave Shooter, Deputy Executive Director for Engineering and Maintenance. What do you have to say for yourself? This is... Uh, a contract with for the transmission mm -hmm. from Southern California gas of our natural gas supply for our utility plant. The uh, in the past it has been a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. In August, Southern California gas changed the master agreement to two years plus two years uh, renewable option, and that option to be automatic unless the customer mm -hmm. d decided not to go with the second two years. Mm -hmm. so now, we our, used to, now, we used to purchase natural gas from our own Department of Water and Power instead of Southern California right. gas. Right. This is not the gas itself. This is simply the transmission of the gas, the transport of the gas through Southern California so gas So it's through pipeline. their pipelines. Right. I got Correct. It. Okay. Now, um, 
there was seems to be a little bit of a delay, five months since the expiration. Right. What's, the expiration what was uh, one September. Right. We had uh, planned to go uh, to the to our board for another two year contract, and in August, the uh, Southern California Gas uh, informed us that they changed the style of the master agreement to the two plus two, mm -hmm. therefore requiring a, a different kind of report. The attorney's determination that we needed to go to city council with it. So there was a delay. Is there um, anywhere, is, this is the only way this, through these pipelines that? Yes. So this Again, is it. We, this we don't really have any options here. We're, we're at, their, uh, at their mercy. Yes. Right. It, would it be in our best interest to try to negotiate a longer term contract? Uh, the master agreement, uh, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. The master agreement is uh, citywide. <laughs> So it encompasses everybody. I know that the Department of Water and Power is working on an ordinance that may do uh, what right. you're talking about. They're right. a much bigger user than we are. Right. Seems to me that it might, might be a better deal for right. us. Okay. Anything else? CAO? Hi. My name is Robert Roth, CAO's office. Um, just to add to some of what you've mentioned, the Southern California Gas Company is the exclusive provider of this fuel, and they own right. those pipelines. Um, so. Currently, Water and Power, DWP, is the provider of the fuel itself. And but it has they to have go through their pipelines. Commitment. We still need their pipelines, right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you. And if uh, obviously, we'll be looking at, at the bigger picture to see whether or not we, we can get a better deal right. for a longer contract. Okay. Um, I have no cards on this item. Seeing no objections from my fellow council members, we will uh, move that towards full city council. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now for the item that everybody's here for. Item three. Under item three, the city attorney submits for consideration a report and discussion draft of an ordinance to establish procedures for filing and processing an appeal to the city council of a CEQA determination made by the board, commission, or other officials of a city department when no other appeal is available. Various written comments have also been received from environmental groups and local neighborhood councils, including the submission of an alternative ordinance by a coalition of environmental and homeowner groups. Good morning, Councilwoman Susan Fan. Hi, Susan. Assistant City Attorney. I have with me Tim McWilliams. Uh, he will be head of the CEQA section after I retire in about three weeks. Oh, so congratulations. Okay. What I had planned to do was run through sort of the background of how we got here go through the major provisions of the ordinance, address some of the comments that have been received during since it was first presented, right. and then ask questions unless you would. You know, what, what I would like to do is um, maybe take our public comment now. Okay. So that, you know, because there'll be certain comments, I'm sure, that I'll want to say. Great. Um, how, how, you know, how would you respond to that? Fine. So let's do it that way. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let's take public comment on this item. Council member, two minutes or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Here comes here comes Mr. Rosendahl. Well, uh, we no. <laughs> okay, uh, council member, we're on item three, and uh, this is the uh, the CEQA appeal process. <clears throat> what I thought we'd do is go through public comment first, sure, <clears throat> and then hear from the city attorney and have the city attorney maybe address some of the concerns that, that I think we good. have. Okay, good. So I'm just taking these the way they came to me. Uh, Noel Weiss. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, we have four chairs. Let's do that. Noel Weiss, Melissa Lynn, <clears throat> Perella, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. Um, is that Elisa Yamas? And uh, Christopher Kuntz. Okay. Good morning, Councilwoman. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Rosenbaum. Uh, <clears throat> Good morning. I'm here to support the proposed alternative ordinance, um, what I call the Anti-Dog and Pony Show Ordinance. The alternative ordinance presented uh, incorporates, I think, w the core social values embodied in our system, uh, which our governmental institutions should reflect. Um, this issue is the land use equivalent of the living wage ordinance. Um, it'll, it's, that ordinance empowered 
the hotel workers economically, this will empower the, uh, the people democratically, um, and it will also um, provide uh, an opportunity basically for, I think, what amounts to probably a <coughs> tremendous legacy. What we're talking about here is a, the most important two components. One, a protocol for rebuttal. Very important. Doesn't exist now. Um, in, this is a quasi-judicial proceeding. In court, there's the appellate, there's the respondent, there's always a chance to rebut. That's when the truth comes out. And the City Council, listening to these appeals, is in a better position to understand and find the truth and make policy, because that's really what happens when you get that rebuttal. Very important. A, a subsidiary uh, important component is the SB 1818, because SB 1818 incorporates uh, a CEQA component. And unfortunately, this is completely silent on that issue as well. Um, if this is done right, I think the object here, to get the right result, for the right reason and the right way. Fairness across the board. I think in the end what will happen is we'll get less appeals, we'll get a more informed city council because we'll get more predictability as these uh, people will know going up in advance what the rules are. There'll be less games it's why, and, and, and as I say I think a little bit less of a uh, dog and pony show. So uh, going forward I've, I've submitted a little bit of a matrix which yeah. I didn't finish, <laughs> but at least it's, it's a start. Okay. And, uh, and, and the bottom line is um, I look forward to hopefully uh, uh, a good debate on this issue. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. No. Okay. Good morning. My name is Melissa Lynn Perella. I'm from the Natural Resources Defense Council. Uh, thank you, <coughs> Council Members uh, Hahn and Rosendorf, to, for the ability to speak this morning. I'm here opposed to the current draft of the ordinance and in favor of the alternative ordinance that we provided. Um, Councilwoman Hahn, you know that NRDC has taken advantage of the um, appeal process before, and I think because of that and, and with the help of your leadership, I think we've been able to make um, projects at the port uh, better. Um, some may disagree, but I think that actually um, we were able to um, improve those projects, and a great example is we now have an agreement to have $6 million go towards air filtration systems in schools in the San Pedro and Wilmington area. It's not clear to me that that agreement would have happened if it wasn't for our ability to work with you um, and other city council members to ensure that that could happen. Um, some might argue that the um, an appeals process like the one that we've provided in, alter in our alternative ordinance might delay things. I would actually argue um, that in many instances it might prevent litigation and thus allow projects to go forward faster as was the our experience with the trade pack expansion pro um, project. Um, I am in support of fair appeal procedures. Um, I just want to make sure that they are not foreclosing the public's ability to, to um, inform the city council of, um, of projects that you need to know about, CEQA decisions that may not have been completely sound. Um, in terms of a couple um, brief comments on the draft ordinance, um, I want to make sure that any ordinance that goes forward um, um, doesn't preclude um, um, appellants or, or doesn't require appellants to have communicated their grounds of appeal before the non-elected body as a condition to filing an appeal. Um, that kind of provision, I believe, disempowers your ability to act on projects, to have all of the information mm -hmm. before you, before acting on a CEQA decision. And I think we need to make sure that you retain jurisdiction over environmental determination so that if you send something back to the non-elected body, that you can make sure that any, any um, instructions you've sent back are followed. Um, so again, I support the alternative ordinance. Um, I would suggest that we move forward with that, with that unless there is clear indication um, or reasons why we shouldn't move forward with it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elva Yanez. I am here representing the Latino Urban Forum. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, there, I am opposed to the current draft ordinance. Um, our organization is opposed to the current draft ordinance. And we understand that there is definitely a need for clear appeal procedures for CEQA decisions. However, these dis these Procedures have to be clear and inclusive of community members, and currently they're not for the reasons that mm -hmm. we've already heard. Um, and I want to urge you to support the alternative ordinance language. And I'll be brief. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Christopher Kuntz on behalf of Councilman Paul Koretz. The councilman wanted me to um, express our concerns about the draft ordinance. Um, we feel that Having no ordinance certainly isn't helping anyone because these appeals do come in and there's no procedure whatsoever, but we have five specific areas that we have concerns with the current draft. The first is the provision that uh, 
a person filing an appeal would have to have somehow previously communicated in writing. Um, I think it presents both practical concerns as to whether they did or didn't. Um, but the bigger concern is that the CEQA process is the people's opportunity to be involved in, in planning and major decisions. And we can't do that if we lock people out. Um, likewise, any, can, any requirement that they previously raised an issue is impossible. New issues come up at every hearing, and we can't reasonably expect people to have raised the issue prior. The time for appeal, the actions we're talking about have 15 to 24-day appeals when they're working through the normal process that they would then somehow have a shorter appeal period um, to counsel we don't feel is appropriate. Um, likewise, we feel there does have to be an appropriate notice to the community before the, the appeal itself finally appears at council. And lastly, we, we understand financially that there has to be some filing fee, but we want assurance that that fee is, is reasonable and something that uh, individual homeowners are able to handle um, consistent with the view we took when we had the fees reduced for other planning appeals that came before council earlier, late last year. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take Frank O'Brien, uh, Jesse Marquez, Kathleen Whitfield, and Jennifer Ganata. Go ahead. Good, good morning, Councilman Hahn and Councilman Rosendahl. My name is Frank O'Brien. I'm the executive director of a nonprofit that's down in the Harbor area, and I've come to comment on the proposed CEQA ordinance. And I give you my testimony both as someone who's sued the city and been a, 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 a petitioner in CEQA cases and someone who's also tried to get projects through the city's permitting process. And in that, in both of those experiences, it's clear that a, a roadmap is necessary for both applicants and for members of the public and organizations to know, know sort of what the steps are needed. Having said that, the proposed CEQA ordinance goes a little too far in my estimation. And when I was involved in CEQA cases, uh, people would ask me, why don't you become a lawyer? And I said, well, give me $500, and I'll give you three reasons why I'm not a lawyer and three reasons why I, I should be a lawyer. <laughs> and I say that not to critique attorneys, but to raise an issue, and that is there are legal arguments in, 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 in favor of all kinds of alternatives. But as council members, there's an underlying responsibility to hear all the facts before you render judgment. And a secret process that precludes that sort of defeats one of the purposes that you guys are holding office. So you want to be in a position to weigh all the information. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the second point is you want to be in a position to hear from all your interested constituents. I remember a story you used to tell a lot, you may still do, about your father saying, let's hear from the people. Right? And that's a really great principle. And I think that should be embodied in the secret document as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. OK, Jesse, Kathleen. My name is Jesse Marquez. I live at 613 North Wilmington, Gulf Avenue, Wilmington. I'm speaking as an individual resident of the city of LA and as executive director of the Coalition for a Safe Environment, also headquartered in Wilmington. I also oppose the ordinance as written. I am an individual who recently went through an appeal process for the city of LA, so I have some unique understandings of it. Uh, one of them is that in the notification, I am requesting that there be a 30-day notification in my circumstance, I was traveling for one week, and I actually ended up on like a 10-day trip. And so when a letter was sent to me or email sent to me and telephone notification, I was traveling the whole time. So 10 days is absolutely impossible to be able to address the people in that circumstances. The other thing is that in my case, the Port of LA also had their legal counsel prepare about a 25-plus page legal document. So there needs to be enough time for an individual to read the legal document, interpret what it says, and possibly seek other counsel. Another element is the fact that when the Trade Tourism Committee or the City Council reviews an appeal, we feel that they have a fiduciary responsibility to do due diligence to verify some of the information. In my case, I was challenging the fact that alternative technologies were not adopted. From what I understand and what I see and what I've read, the committee and the council depended solely on the port's documentation and any witnesses that showed up. That is not adequate. The minimum expectation of the public is that the council and the committee, if I bring up a specific challenge or issue, they have an obligation to investigate it. The minimum they could have done was contact 
the company to verify is it feasible and is it cost effective. That was not done. And the reason I'm bringing it up because I lost Friday in court, not because I was wrong, because the judge expected me to provide the documentation to prove that it was feasible. Oh. He also denied me because I was not an expert witness, which means I was not an engineer or the manufacturer. So it wasn't because I was wrong necessarily. Okay. Now I did submit a written comment Thank you. of other yeah. issues to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. And we're uh, joined by Councilmember Labonge. Good morning. Welcome back, Tommy. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Kathleen. Good morning, Council Members. My name is Kathleen Woodfield. I'm representing the San Pedro and Peninsula Homeowners Coalition. Uh, we are a coalition of homeowners groups in the harbor area for the Port of Los Angeles. <coughs> I ask you please do not approve the city attorney's draft CEQA appeals ordinance as it is so restrictive that it may discourage responsible, meaningful, and informed appeals. We support a well-defined and fair appeals process that provides equal access for the public and for community residents. And so we are here to support the alternative ordinance. Uh, we are residents of the Harbor area where we deal with port environmental impact reports that are voluminous and extremely complicated and complex. Some of them are 6,000 pages. And as community people, we simply cannot work under the restraints of this draft language of 10 days notice um, for um, an appeal to appeal and 10 days calendar days to appeal 10 calendar days notice before a uh, hearing for an appeal, a sequel appeal. W we would benefit if, uh, greatly by having a staff report available prior to any of these um, hearings. We also would like to have no fees associated with filing. We are in a low income area. We deal with a lot of environmental justice issues, uh, both financially and also we are living with tremendous impact uh, from the port area. Um, we want you to empower us as much as possible through this CEQA um, process, uh, appeals process. We do think there should be an appeals process. Um, we are also very concerned that um, the current language seems to take away some of the authority of the city council. We want that authority to remain with the city council. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Sorry. Um, good morning, council members. My name is Jennifer Ganata. I'm a community organizer with Communities for a Better Environment. We organize communities in Southeast LA and in Wilmington around environmental justice issues. Uh, CBE is opposed to the proposed ordinance um, by the city attorney's office, and we're in support of the alternative ordinance. As a community, <coughs> sorry, as a community organizer, it's necessary to have ample time to explain to community members the significance of a CEQA appeal. More importantly, it's important to obtain consensus from our members when moving forward on any campaign. Allowing 10 calendar days to appeal an environmental determination is simply not enough time to allow for meaningful public participation. Extending the amount of time to file an appeal to 30 days after notice of environmental de determination and 100 days when notice is, is not provided would be more effective. In addition, these deadlines are consistent with the statute of limitations for court challenges and CEQA decisions. So, on behalf of CBE, we hope that you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's take uh, Beverly Kenworthy, uh, Pilar Hoyas. Oh, Pilar, are you here? I didn't see Pilar. Oh, there's Pilar. Hi, Pilar. Um, Rosalie Preston and Tracy Ch 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 Chavira. Did I say that right? Close. Okay. <coughs> Hi, Beverly Kenworthy with the LA Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the LA Chamber absolutely supports the establishment of clear and sufficient guidelines and efficient guidelines, both for the applicant and for the public. I think um, our biggest concern is the previously communicating in writing. We believe that that's an important part of the current draft. Um, DIRs have spent, by the time they get to the hearing process and beyond, they have spent sometimes years in the process, um, in hearings with comments back and forth with the city. And 
a lot of times, you know, everybody's engaged in that process. The public is often engaged in the hearing process and everything like that. And we think those things are important. But at some point, you know, how long is too long? CEQA is intended to be expeditious. Um, there are time constraints. And we want to make sure that while the public has a fair process as well, that the applicant has some certainty about, you know, what they have to do to move forward. And we're concerned that when, you know, at the last minute an issue hasn't been raised, when you've had sometimes six or eight months to a couple years to be a part of this process, that at that point we're just doing what we can to delay, I think, the, a project. Um, you know, we're very concerned about delays right now, especially in our economy, where job creation and getting projects moving is, is really important. So I would just say that that's the Chamber's largest concern, and um, I hope you take that in consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Laura. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you uh, this morning. Um, I'm a resident of the 5th District. Um, I work for Watson Land Company. We're based in Carson. Um, I've been with the company for 23 years. Um, in case you're not familiar with us, I did bring a little packet that I'll leave behind. Uh, I think it's important for me to emphasize the fact that we take great pride in the fact that we build green. Tell us your name for the record. I'm sorry, Pilar Hoyos, Vice President of Public Affairs. Uh, we are building green. Uh, the last five years, everything we have built uh, has been LEED certified. Gold buildings, we're about to move into a platinum building uh, in the city of Carson. We're neighbors to Wilmington. Um, the jobs issue is what has brought me here. Uh, our retired chairman always taught me early on, quality of life begins with a job. In my 23 year history, I have seen our buildings uh, mostly occupied, used to be occupied by manufacturing, now almost entirely logistics and warehouse. So I'm here to you uh, to speak to you from a broader perspective of the importance of understanding that projects and our competitiveness as a region, as a city, for the ports have a very, very broad impact on quality of life that begins with jobs. Uh, we believe that the uncertainty, uh, the never-ending CEQA process, the state law provides for a process that has, just like every other CEQA process that says, you have to bring up those issues. You can't keep bringing up new things. And I think that's the thing that most troubles us about what is being requested. If, if you want to tinker with uh, timeliness or length of uh, opportunities for review, that's understandable. But to bring new items up and never have closure is what is driving jobs and investments to our region that affects us all. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Tracy Shavira with Central City Association. I would like to request that you approve the current draft ordinance as written. Uh, so a fair CEQA appeal process can be instituted for all interested parties. The CEQA process is long and costly, as we well know. While the process is intended to have statutory timelines, they are rarely followed, and full EIRs usually take three years from start to finish. But in some cases, and especially those projects that, um, that may have some time, may have opposition, they can take as long as five years or more. The CEQA process itself is set up to make sure that every impact is addressed. There are volumes of technical data that are reviewed and modeled and mountains of public input at various stages in the process. After all the analysis has come to a conclusion and the recommended mitigation measures have been approved, it is important to not discount all the work and participation at the last hour with a convoluted appeal process. In a time where job creation is everyone's number one priority, it is essential that developers have certainty about the development process. Therefore, it is essential that the city have a fair and legal CEQA appeal process. The last thing the city needs at a time when economic development is vital to our recovery is additional uncertainty. So in closing, CSA supports the current draft ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Rosalie. Rosalie Preston, um, member of the board of the Harbor Gateway North Neighborhood Council. We are one of two neighborhood councils who have filed community impact 
statements on this issue. Harbor Gateway North is opposed to the current proposal and we support the alternative language. We have gone through um, one or two um, environmental impact report processes within our neighborhood council and we definitely see the need for a longer appeal time frame and we support having a no fee or a low cost fee to make it possible for the, the community groups to, afi to file appeals. Thank you. Um, okay, our last public comment is from Luis uh, Cabrales. Cabrales? Is that you? Did I, say, yes. I didn't say that right. Yes, you did. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Last but not least. Absolutely. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Council members, my name is Luis Cabrales. I represent Coalition for Clean Air. Coalition for Clean Air is a statewide organization with long history of working on um, litigation issues, both um, in um, association with the city and against the city. Um, I want to start by commending the city for um, your work to address the need for a CEQA uh, process. Uh, we support your work and um, uh, to adopt a fair procedure to guide the public on how to appeal CEQA decisions by non-elected decision makers. Unfortunately, as drafted, this ordinance exacerbates the problem that it is designed to solve in the first um, place. As written, the, the draft limits public participation and undermines the city's own authority um, to intervene to improve CEQA projects. Further, as drafted, this plan benefits those with human and financial resources and uh, excludes community participation or uh, those groups that um, have limited resources. Many of them have worked with the city um, in a lot of projects or defending um, uh, CEQA, uh, uh, appealing CEQA decisions. Um, we feel the city needs uh, an ordinance that allows me member participation to appeal on any grounds. We feel that CEQA, um, a fair uh, CEQA appeal does not um, uh, limit uh, job or growth. Uh, we have not seen any cases where that uh, has happened. Uh, and we ask this committee to um, to look at the draft submitted by NRDC on behalf of the environmental community. We feel this draft um, is a fair draft and should be um, adopted. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank much. you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, <coughs> let's have the city attorney uh, come back up. And let me just make a few comments uh, be before we hear, come on up city attorney. But um, I, I think you heard a lot of uh, concerns uh, this morning during public comment uh, and uh, you know, on on both sides uh, of this uh, appeal process, and uh, and let me just say to start out, I, I don't think any of us want to to ever uh, you know do anything that we think is going to hurt jobs uh, or you know economic recovery uh, right now. Uh, certainly in the city of Los Angeles, I, I think it's on everybody's mind. I think we saw an unprecedented action by our state legislature when they actually set aside uh, CEQA to uh, push forward a football stadium uh, to be built because jobs, you know, became the triumphant cry. But I, I think we have an opportunity here to put something in place long term. And certainly the economy is going to recover, uh, I believe. I think we're already seeing uh, an uptick at, at, uh, of cargo uh, coming through our port. So I think recovery is coming and California will get back to work and Los Angeles will get back to work. And, and we all want jobs because we've all, we all know people who have lost their jobs, lost their homes. But I think this process is something that will be long term for, for, for the city of Los Angeles. And we have an opportunity, I think, to put into place something that is, um, that is fair. And, and for me, and, and I, I can't speak for my other council members here, but for me, uh, you know, equal access is going to be very important. I think we've got to make sure that uh, everybody has an equal chance 
uh, at, at filing an appeal. I, I think we want to put in practical timelines uh, that uh, certainly give the, the applicant of the project a clear sense of, of timing. Uh, but I do uh, think already I, I feel like the, you know, the 10 days is a little um, short uh, for, for that. And I, and I also believe we ought to retain the council's authority. I think that was made pretty clear, I think, by, by Noel Weiss in, in the first remark. But I also feel that, too. This is why we're elected. Um, and I would like to figure out a way that uh, when we send back uh, instructions to the board or commission that, uh, you know, is, is ultimately okaying these projects, you know, that we want to make sure they follow what the elected body is saying. These are all non-elected bodies out there that are, that are approving these, these, um, these contracts, I mean these projects. And also, I believe, as Melissa said, that the appeal process is an opportunity, I think, to move projects forward and address concerns and work out issues and work out problems. I've seen that on two projects at, at the port, uh, that we actually avoided lawsuits. I think we ought to look at the appeal process as not just dispensing of the appeal as quickly as possible, but I think we ought to look at it as trying to avoid a costly, time-consuming lawsuit. Because once these projects get into litigation, then I think the timeline becomes really uh, unmanageable. And I don't think we can even tell at what point a project would either be able to go forward or not go forward. So I think the appeal process is our opportunity for you know the, the business community, the labor community, the environmental community, the elected community to get together and kind of work out these issues and work out problems uh, to avoid a costly lawsuit. And then, in my opinion, these projects go forward faster and the, and the jobs happen quicker than were it to be tied up in litigation with courts. And that only makes a bunch of lawyers uh, rich. Uh, and it costs, as we know, the city of Los Angeles, it costs us, you know, millions of dollars. So I think the appeal process, appeal process should be our friend. That's how I think we ought to look at it and not, and not try to make it, you know, as restrictive as possible and, and afraid of what might come up through the process. And, and, and by the way, and I understand not wanting to keep bringing things up uh, for the length of the process, but we found out uh, in the in the port area, there was actually some technology that sort of wasn't even didn't even exist at the time that the board made uh, a recommendation, and we were able to bring that forward and talk about it with the project applicant to say, hey, is this technology something that you would consider using? And um, so I found it to be a process in my own experience that moves projects along, gets jobs happening quicker than than if we were to go. Uh, in a lawsuit. Um, so, with that having been said, um, maybe you can give us a sense of um, why your draft ordinance is the way it is, why the city attorney recommended 10 days, uh, and, and some of these other issues that you've heard brought up. Right. And actually, the issues just, you just mentioned and the ones that were spoken about here were sort of some of the main issues in contention that we had considered. But I would like to put this a little bit in context to start okay. out, and I think it will make things a little bit clearer for the reason that we drafted it the way we did. Um, first, to clarify, this process was created because state law required us to have appeals of CEQA determinations. We already, in our code and charter, have a number of different types of approvals that already, by, by means of the code or the charter, are decided by city council. And in all of those cases, there are processes, ordinances, for instance, all have to be decided by city council. City council has the opportunity to uh, consider the CEQA clearance. A lot of the other, like track maps, a lot of the, the uh, matters that come through the planning department already have in the code particular appeal procedures that bring things up to city council. But not everything that gets decided in the city that requires an environmental clearance has a route to council. And so this right. ordinance was uh, attempted to pick up on those other items that don't uh, already go to city council. Um, and when we decided how to draft, we considered a little bit of a policy that the city had set up for itself a structure about what things should go to council and what things should not. And the ones that this ordinance uh, addresses are the ones that normally, if there weren't a CEQA clearance, wouldn't go to city council. Right. So that's a bit of the context. We had uh, some other issues about 
uh, rules that constrain our ability to bring things up to City Council, for instance, under the Charter. And so when we drafted this ordinance, we tried to draft it as narrowly to only apply to the environmental determination. And that becomes significant because when people here talked about taking away from Council's authority, I think what they were addressing was the fact that this ordinance only speaks to Council's authority over the environmental clearance as opposed to the underlying approval, for an, as an example. Right now, the city has provisions in its code for B permits, which the Bureau of Engineering issues, uh, and they issue them for things like street improvements. Uh, those things do not uh, have an appeal that goes up to city council under our existing codes, but because the state law requires an appeal, the environmental determination would go up to city council. So city council could decide what the appropriate environmental determination is, but the actual decision as to whether or not issue the B permit goes back to the department that we've delegated it to. And so there, there's a little bit of a split there. But I, I think they also mean that the council should be allowed to consider all the issues, new issues yes. on the appeal, even if they weren't raised. I think that's also part of right. having, making sure that we, as the decision makers, have all the information that right. we need, whether or not it necessarily was raised before that particular board. Okay. So uh, let me just address that more directly. In terms of the comments, what I saw were the main categories was the time in which right. to file the appeal, right. uh, whether or not you had to state the grounds that you wanted to raise in the appeal, right. uh, the amount of the fee, and then this issue about the council authority. Right. In terms of the time to appeal, right. um, as pointed out by one of the uh, uh, people making comments, a public comment, is CEQA already has time periods. The state law requires certain time periods. When you have a negative declaration or an EIR, there are mandatory periods of time for people to comment. They're called the public comment period. And CEQA says that you, you, this is your opportunity. We do a very wide circulation of the environmental do, uh, document. There are comments are submitted. The department will then respond to the comments. And only after that period of time where the people are, are invited to comment does the matter even go to the decision maker. And so these, these very often get extended. And so CEQA already has a comment uh, period of time sort of built in. Um, in terms of the, the 10 days a notice of appeal, that's a policy decision that this council should make. Their CEQA does have, uh, they have uh, some somewhat competing policies. They have a policy in, in favor of broad public participation, but CEQA also has a policy that says that CEQA should not be used to delay projects right. and that people sh uh, should bring their comments and their issues forward right. as soon as possible. What's the and, statute of limitations for challenges to be filed under CEQA in court? Okay, it, after the city is finally finished with the uh, approval, it has a final approval. Right, how many days though? It, it depends on whether you file a document called a notice of determination, but it ranges between 30 days and 180 days. Okay, so okay. does the city attorney, would you have issues mirroring that 30 days in this ordinance? 30 days for what? For, to file, to file notice the notice of appeal? Mm -hmm. Well, it would extend the process by another days. additional 30 days until it got to the city, and at that point, then you would have between 30 and 180. In terms of the... the it would, the, it would so be 20 days. It's policy. Yeah, but okay. But in terms of how we pick these days, what we yeah. did, we attempted to mirror as much as possible existing appeal procedures that are already built into the code, because to us, that represented the city council's determination through its codes of how it wanted appeals to be done. And we actually did a, a little survey of the different appeals that apply to planning, Bureau of Engineering, other decisions. And we looked at 18, no, 22 other uh, types of appeals uh, and how long the notice of appeal period was. And they ranged almost equally between 10 and 15 days. Okay. So that's, so so that's you were kind just, of how we okay. picked it. So that's okay. how you got that. Right. Okay. So that's how we got there. All right. In terms of whether or not the, um, the, the person appealing should state the grounds on which they are raising the appeal. Uh, that is a matter of, it, it assists the city council and the city in determining what the issues are they need to consider. It allows staff the opportunity to address the issues and bring evidence in on that. And, uh, but again, that's a, a policy issue. There are, when you go to court, the judge will look at what the city has done in terms of as a very, very general statement. It looks whether or not you have evidence to support whatever your decision is. If issues are raised at the very last minute, mm -hmm. then the city only gets evidence from one side. And so depending on how it rules, it's sometimes you end up having a, 
an incomplete record. Other things that sometimes happen if people bring up significant issues at the very last minute, although they have had opportunities to comment all along, they bring it up and sometimes council will want to hear about that. That in, requires council to have another continuous. Well, but it's ever, you, you, hearing only one side, I mean, it seems to me that that's what you do during the appeal is you would then have everybody at the table saying, what about this? And, and I mean, that's where our due diligence Presumably, comes in. Presumably, yes. So I don't, I don't think we would think, oh, we're going to hear one side of the story. I mean, I think that's, that's true. up to us to say, I mean, that's, right. the, that's where the process really we, happens, the give and take. We do have, you can see, though, if you, at certain council meetings, that people will come in with appeals and there'll be a stack of papers like this thick that they will hand at the close of the public hearing. And that, right. that is technically evidence that the city is held to defend against. And so it was for that reason okay. that we put in. But again, that, that is another policy issue. What about who's eligible to appeal? It, it's a variation of the same thing. It's the CEQA has the policy, raise your objections early, so let us all, know so, about So them. your ordinance basically says only those who objected to the project during public comment can appeal. Right. And so that's so people don't come out and who haven't uh, availed themselves of earlier opportunities to comment come in and then bring that last appeal. But again, policy decision. Right. right. What about filing fees? Filing fees. Uh, well, that's, a, uh, again, a policy decision for the city council to right. make. Uh, and this is just what you, you proposed, $89? No. Oh. It's a, the ordinance actually just had a blank for that to decide whether or not oh. council wants to do it. But planning, planning has like 80, Planning, yeah. The yeah, actually, okay. planning $89. staff pointed out there's an existing ordinance that has an $89 generalized filing fee. I am not sure whether it only applies to appeals from planning department. We can certainly find that out. But there is a, a provision. Uh, there's a provision that requires a certain procedure that you have to go through if you're going to have a filing fee. It's described right. in the report that we submitted on the last page. Right. And so we I'm would gonna, ask your right. direction whether you want okay. to try and impose. Okay. I'm going to let some of my other council members weigh in on this. Have you looked at this uh, alternative uh, draft ordinance that's uh, being discussed this I morning? I have looked at it. it, it, it what, anticipation of perhaps asking questions it's not right. actually in front of it okay there are some provisions in terms of clarification of language i think fine we can adopt right. i think the uh i think the main issues i think you, you the main you, issues you are the on. length of time and it, the other issue it is it, it it imposes a whole other additional procedural step that the city would have to go through which is a filing particular notice after a decision and then only from them with the time to appeal and the the timelines i thought were much longer than would be useful for the city but if you're seriously considering wanting to go with that alternative ordinance mm -hmm. i think it would be helpful if it were formally submitted to you so that people could have a comment we have an opportunity to analyze okay it for you. i think that's what we're going to do <laughs> exactly that's the direction i i suggest as well first um you know i strongly believe it shouldn't be limited who who's able to appeal I think neighborhood councils, which demonstrated their interest in this, should also be part of that process. And it should be a wider group of, of folks allowed to appeal. I don't think 10 days works. It's got to be at least 30 days, no matter what. So people have time to reflect. If they want a public comment about a 10-day period, you might, you know, might not be around. So, um, And then the purpose of a filing fee, once again, the public's the public, and uh, uh, they shouldn't be burdened with that unless there's a good reason for that. I just don't see why they should. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to obviously keep the power in the city council with, with the policymakers, and, and never do I want a board or a commission that isn't elected to make the final. That's what we're about. So I'd really like you to take a look at the, the uh, suggested one by the environmentalists, look at what you have put and some of these others, and come back uh, with a redraft that would address these concerns. I would like us to see, uh, you know, look at everything, but also there's some realities that are important. A high-speed rail is extremely important to me. Some people disagree that it's not important. Railroads have been there 170, not quite 170, but 150 years uh, from when they came. Yet we know there's going to be a process uh, the Wilshire subway is a process. Uh, I think there's got to be something, I'm just saying, where there's certain things. The Port of Los Angeles is very important, and how you relate to that is very important. I think there's something even beyond this uh, that I haven't figured out yet, Ms. Hahn, so I enjoy this discussion. Jobs are absolutely important, but a living environment. I came from a school this morning where the school was upset 
uh, excuse me, the school wasn't upset, but the neighbors were upset with the school. Mm. School's been there since 1931. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, if you, you know, the old adage, if you live next to a park, what do you got to expect? The, plub, the public. <laughs> you know, if you live next to the Port of Los Angeles, there should be absolutely guidelines that helps to coexist with what was a uh, poorly zoned city. It wasn't until 1945 that I think we had our comprehensive zoning code that allows certain things to happen. But as we go forward, the struggle that we have, in my own area there, there's an NBC Universal project proposed that doesn't match what the land development is, but at the same time, jobs are extremely important for production, but I don't want to see something built that's going to come back into the face of the community. I think you don't want to see something built that comes back in the face of the community, but the process should be extremely open. I, I don't have this, and I'm just going to throw this out. You know, they talk about this uh, uh, ratepayer advocate, which I don't support necessarily over at Water and Power because I think that's what the commission and the council is for. Uh, but uh, there could be an a environmental advocate in major departments that is somewhat separate from the department that deals with community to give them the – that's what I all thought. I always thought on the whole neighborhood issue, Janice, mm-hmm. is there should be a desk that gives you the information, the power, and the knowledge, and the help to move forward with your your objections as opposed to – another bureaucracy of a, of a meeting. I mean, at some point we make a decision and we move forward, but at the same time I haven't figured it out. Right. Now I owe you three minutes of your life back because I just yeah. took it. Thank you. Um, well, I, again, I think you heard, heard a lot of co- concerns that we had, and, and I think Councilman Rosendahl is suggesting that uh, you basically take a look at this draft uh, alternative and then maybe uh, come back. Uh, to this committee? Yes, to this yeah. committee. What we'd like to Could do you, is to be able to. I'd like for you to look at you know the, the put mid- comments on the portions of yeah. it. Some of it we feel and we could not approve as okay. Too, for that's legality. fine. That's fine. And then okay. and then as you've said over and over again, these are policy decisions that we're going to make. Right. So why don't you take another look at it? Uh, things that the, you can, uh, you know, I think you're going to get pretty much unanimous approval for the moving that from the 10 days to the 30 days. Uh, for the notice of appeal or from between for the for being able to file your appeal well right so once the decision maker makes a decision right then there days. would it be a period of time to file the appeal and the way the right. ordinance is set up it wouldn't be for another 60 days until the appeal is actually heard so you want that first period to be 30 days and then another 60 days before council even looks at it right because right now it's 10 days and then 60 days right. is that what you're saying so we're adding 20 days okay but okay and, and I think so that go, that would go a long way. I, I think just I'm I'm just feeling that's and, then, and we broaden the circulation to include neighborhood right. councils and, and other right. Ones. The circulation, whatever the underlying approval has, the circulation would be the same. That it would be the same notice. And if the underlying uh, approval was something that didn't require notice in the first place, then the ordinance provides that the notice would go to the applicant, uh, and to the appellant, and um, to the department. So. All right. Just as long as in that appellate card, yeah. neighborhood councils and others are. are I just yeah. Are Basically, I, I think what we want is for you to look at this alternative. Right. Just compare sections to sections on what the city attorney yeah. is. And we can do that. And, and then and give us comments on again what what you think uh, you you can massage and tweak a little bit and uh, things that you you're 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 just, you're not comfortable okay. with and then let us make the decision where we want to go from there. And where now. would you like that back? What do you think? We could do it within a month. 30 days. 30 days. <laughs> Does that matter? <laughs> I've still around for three weeks. I'll work on this. See, what if, you, what if we gave you 10 days to do that? How would you feel? <laughs> I'd still try. <laughs> just, just make sure the NDRC days. draft is, is reacted to. Line well, yeah, but also at the same time, reaction. let me ask you a question. Do we have a draft from, uh, uh, from the opposite side? Yeah, we do. We could yeah, do, yeah, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so that we do. That's, that's, that's what we want the city attorney to look at. OK. OK. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that's it. Good. Uh, any uh, anybody else in the in the um, in the public uh, domain here uh, that would like to address this esteemed committee? Seeing none, we will adjourn. Hey, good. Missed you.